Hi everybody, this is Carla the Bubble Lush, and I am going to attempt to do my labor and delivery story of Hannah. Um, I tried to film this earlier, and it was way too long, and then I just tried to film it, but she was crying the whole time. So, we just ate, <sighs> and I think we're nice and calm, so I'm going to try to do it again. <sighs> okay, so... Are we comfy? Are we nice and comfy? Okay. Alright, so my labor and delivery story starts um, Thursday, September 16th. Um, I think it was the 16th. Yeah, 16th. Um, I was 42 weeks pregnant, so two weeks post-term. And um, we called that morning to make sure that they had room for us, and they did, so we went on in at 8 a.m. to start our induction. Um, it's okay, baby girl. It's okay. The first couple hours um, in the hospital were spent doing the initial monitoring to see how well she was doing and to see if I was having any contractions on my own, which I wasn't. And, um, and kind of waiting for the midwives and waiting to get my IV in and everything. They tried to do the IV in my arm like I wanted and um, they just kept blowing my veins out so I had them just do it in my hand. So I had them do it in my left hand. And um, But I really would suggest getting it done in the arm because the first day it was really sore. Yeah. By the second, third day it didn't hurt at all but most labors don't last that long. So. Um, it really would have been painful to try to grasp onto things um, that first day while it was still really sore. So that was good advice to try to get it in the arm. Um, so at right after lunch, I got my first dose of miso, um, which is was to try to ripen the cervix because when I was admitted, I was one centimeter dilated about 50% um, a face, but it was very soft. Uh, I was negative three station and my cervix was very posterior, so it was really an unfavorable situation. I was not starting out very well. Hi. I'm gonna try to go to sleep, take a little nappy nap. Oh, good girl. So, each round of miso um, was in place for four hours. The first two hours I had to be in bed, continuously monitored. Um, and then for like an hour and a half they would let me get up and kind of walk around and then um, kind of for half an hour they wanted to monitor me again to make sure that they could put in a second um, dose of miso because if my contractions were too close together I think it was then they couldn't put in another dose of miso. I think that's what it was. Um, oh good girl. So at one o'clock 1 p.m. I started my first dose of miso, was in bed for two hours, then walked around, and uh, when she checked me at 4 o'clock, which is a little early, um, there was no change in my cervix, so I got my second dose of miso at 5 o'clock, and, um, you know, hung out with the miso all evening, and um, at 10.30, the second midwife, because they were all working 12-hour shifts, so this was I was now into my second midwife. 10.30 she came in to check me, and there wasn't really any change in my cervix, so um, what they decided to do was they, they gave me the option of either putting in the Foley Bowl and having it in place all night, or taking everything off, getting a good night's sleep, and starting fresh on Friday. And I really just wanted to keep things, things progressing, so I had them put in the Foley Bowl. And um, the Foley Bowl was really uncomfortable because it's uh, it's basically a catheter that they put into your uterus, or past your cervix, into your uterus. They inflate it to three centimeters, and then they put pressure on it. So it's kind of like um, the baby's head pushing down on your cervix. You know, you're getting pressure from the inside down on your cervix. And um, it really made my cervix very irritable and about... 45 minutes after it was placed, and you know, kind of everyone went to sleep. Um, I started getting really violent contractions. They were, they were worse than anything I had throughout my entire labor and delivery experience. Um, they lasted, oh my gosh, two and a half minutes, 
um, and then I had about 30 seconds break in between them. So I was using my contraction monitor to time this and they were like, it was like clockwork. They were two and a half minutes long and then I'd have a half minute and then two and a half minutes. And um, finally after like half an hour I woke up my husband because I was just crying. They were so painful and um, they were the first contractions I had ever had. So I was like, if this is what it's going to be like, like, you know, the whole time, like, this is, I'm in early labor and they're already this bad. How am I going to get through this? Um, so I was just really, really scared and overwhelmed and kind of freaking out a little bit. And um, so I woke up Chris and he helped me through them. And I used a lot of the hypnobirthing um, visual visualization techniques. Like, um, there's one that's about the alphabet and you say like, a, 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 B, 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 C, 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 D, 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 to get through the contractions. And there was one contraction, I went through the alphabet twice. So, <laughs> it was really, really tough. But um, I got through them. And finally, I was so exhausted that I fell asleep. So, in the morning at 7.30, when they woke me up, um, I got into the hospital bed, because I slept in my husband's little pull-out couch bed, because it was way more comfortable. Uh, and I made him sleep in the hospital bed. <laughs> Um, but they had to switch places at 7.30 in the morning on Friday, and they checked me, and as soon as they pulled on the little Foley bulb, it came right out. So, it did its job. It dilated me to 3 centimeters, which is really, really good. And, um, I was still 50% effaced and still negative 3 station, and now I was on to my third midwife. So what we did, uh, we decided to, I think I had some breakfast, and then at 10 a.m. they started the Pitocin. They started it at two units a minute, and we're going to increase every like 30, 45 minutes um, throughout the day. So um, I basically was on Pitocin and had Pitocin contractions all day on Friday. And um, in the evening they checked me. It was about 7:30 at night. They checked me, and um, with every contraction, my bag of water was bulging. So she didn't like strip the membranes or anything like that because she didn't want to prematurely rupture my, my membranes. Um, because I still wasn't making that fast of progress. I was still only 3 to 4 centimeters, 50%, negative 3 station. I'd had contractions all day long and wasn't making good progress. So what they did was they took me off the Pitocin for two hours, let me have dinner, and then they started it back up at, at two units a minute. Um, and I was on Pitocin all night long. So, that was all Friday. So basically, all Thursday I was on miso, Thursday night I did the Foley bulb, and all Friday I was on Pitocin. Uh, bright and early Saturday morning, I was on my fourth midwife. <laughs> they checked me at 4 a.m. because um, during the night, Hannah was starting to have problems with my contractions. Every time I was having a contraction, her heart rate was really decelerating. So, um, whereas, you know, my contraction graph was like peaking, at the same time, hers was dipping really, really low. So they had me um, get up on all fours, put an oxygen mask on, um, just try to get her in a different position so she wasn't putting, uh, compressing the cord so much. And it wasn't working, so they decided to, um, they decided to break my bag of water and put in an internal contraction monitor, which is different than an internal fetal monitor. It's not the one that goes into her head. This one just went right into my um, uterus and uh, monitored the change in pressure so that they could get a really accurate reading on my contractions. And it's, it was also, also a catheter. So what they started doing was an amnio infusion, which is where they introduce a saline solution into my amniotic fluid and are kind of flushing out my amniotic fluid to try to increase the volume of fluid in there so that um, she wasn't compressing the cord so much. So I didn't realize this when I agreed to it, but basically that meant that I was just going to be gushing fluid. <laughs> you know, at the same time it was going in, it was coming out, and I was basically like I was just wetting myself all night long. Because they did, they put this in place at 4 a.m., so they were like, go back to sleep. But I just felt like I was peeing myself and like sleeping in a wet bed. It was gross. <laughs> So gross. Uh, so gross. So they started doing the amnio infusion, and at that same time, they also had me put in an epidural. Um, I didn't dose it, but what they wanted was the epidural in place because since I had already, you know, I was starting on my third day, and um, 
I wasn't making that great of progress and they had already broken my bag of water and she was having problems with her heart rate. Um, it was looking like, you know, a C-section really could be a possibility, emergency C-section could be a possibility. So they wanted to have the epidural in place just in case. So I agreed. I had the anesthesiolo anesthesiologist come in, place the epidural. Yeah. But I didn't dose it. I didn't have any pain relief. So, um, yeah. So, um, that was at 4 a.m. on Saturday morning. And, um, I went an additional six hours and all of a sudden my contractions really started to get strong. But I was only at four centimeters. I was 90% effaced. Uh, so I was very thinned out and I was negative two stations. So I was starting to make progress, but, um, at this point, I had been in labor for 50 hours. I had been on Pitocin for a really long time, um, a day and a half. And um, I was just exhausted. I really wasn't coping very well. So I had them um, start dosing the epidural. And it wasn't very heavy. I could still move my legs and stuff, but it just gave me enough of a relief. So, mm, so, um, that was at 10 a.m. on Saturday, and by 3 p.m. I had progressed to 5 centimeters dilated, 100% of face, and negative 1 station. So I made a lot of progress when I was just able to relax and um, I was in much better mood. By 6 p.m. on Saturday I was 6 to 7 centimeters, 100% of face, 0 station, um, but they put me on Tylenol and some other pain reliever because I was starting to get a fever. And I could tell. Um, so, you know, we got there at 8 a.m. on Thursday, and this is now, you know, 7 p.m. on Saturday. And I'm, I have my epidural in, so I'm kind of taking naps and stuff. And every time I wake up from the nap, I am talking, and I'm, I'm like having a conversation with a nurse, but sh there's no one in the room, you know. And um, I'm getting delirious. That's what happens when I get a fever. So I knew that I was getting sick. And they came in and they were like, your fever is at 102. Um, like, this isn't looking good. And um, by 8.30, I was on like my sixth midwife, I think. I was seven centimeters, you know, 100% um, of face, zero station. And um, they started putting me on IV antibiotics for my infection. The Pitocin was at... Um, 28 and they max out at 30 so I mean my pitocin was extremely high and uh, my contractions were very strong and uh, Hannah just wasn't doing well and my infection was getting really serious my fever was well over 102 degrees so um, that morning at like um, probably 1 a.m. they came in and they were like we're gonna we're thinking we're probably gonna have to do a c-section and obviously I was really upset and um, I told mom you know go and call dad have everybody get here and um, by you know 2 30 they were willing me into the to the room and um, to have the c-section because she just really was not handling the contractions very well and I was very sick I was very very sick um, when I was on the operating table I was shaking uncontrollably like so violently that I just remember thinking my incision is going to be a jagged mess <laughs> because I just I was sh I was shivering and shaking and it was awful and um, and I couldn't stop. I just I couldn't stop myself from just like convulsing, basically. And um, Chris was right there with me, and he, once they were trying to like, they were like the baby's gonna come out. He uh, he stood up and he was able to. Yes. He was able to take some pictures of Hannah coming out, and he got to see them cutting the cord. Not right. And. Um, they took her over to the warmer and everyone was like, she is big and beautiful and long, but I still hadn't seen her. And um, finally I was able to grab the kind of cloth curtain that they had in place and pull it back enough so I could see her in her isolate. And um, I saw her foot kind of swing by and I saw her face just real, real quick. And 
And I saw the nurse that was holding her, like, set her down the isolate, and she turned towards me, and she was just covered in poop. Hannah just pooped all over her. It was the funniest thing. And Chris went over to be with her, and um, because I had such a bad infection, my amniotic fluid was infected, um, she had to go to the NICU, so they immediately took her away to start her on IV antibiotics. So Chris went with her, and... Um, they stitched me up, and I I lost quite a bit of blood. So I was in recovery for a long time, and um, about an hour and a half after she was born... Hi. Hi. They brought her in, and that was the first time I got to see her, really. First time I got to hold her. But she was already um, kind of starting to fall asleep, you know, get real tired. She would passed that alert face. So, um... We tried to nurse, but she just fell asleep. So I just held her. And she went back to the NICU with my parents and Chris, and I went to the mother-baby unit. And um, Hannah was in the NICU for 15 hours. So I didn't get to go see her until about 5 p.m. that night. Um, they wheeled me down, and I got to hold her for a little bit, do some kangaroo care. And, um, and then shortly after that, they brought her back up to my room. Hi. And it was wonderful from there. So, all in all, it was 65 hours of labor, 50 hours without any pain relief. Um, and, you know, someone asked me if you knew going in that it was going to end up in a C-section. Would you have just opted to have the C-section right away? And at first, I was like, no, because I was—I ex feel extremely empowered by the labor that I was able to handle it as well as I did, and um, it's just kind of empowering to know that you can do that. But then I thought about it for a second more, and um, I would have totally given that experience up and just had the C-section because that way she wouldn't have had to go into the NICU. I wouldn't have been sick. She wouldn't have. Uh, been away from me and even though um, you know I wouldn't have gotten the thrill of her being placed on my chest right after she was born I would have got to see her very shortly after she was born instead of waiting until you know she was born at 3 a.m. and I didn't get to like really see her until 5 p.m. so it was a really long sad day so um, that is our labor and delivery story it's epic <laughs> we were admitted Thursday morning as she was born Sunday morning, so um, I hope your guys' labors and delivery go much faster than that, but um, they're all special in their own ways, so we love our story, don't we? Yes. Yes. And you were absolutely worth every minute. You were such a strong girl. Yes. You were such a strong girl. Anyways, thanks for listening to our latest.